11th and April 18th. And in the St. Louis Post Dispatch on Monday, April 10th, 2017. Could you state for the record the name of the rec center you're speaking of? I'm speaking of, uh, it was 12th and Park. It was, used to be Ray Legion. I love to call it Ray Legion because I think he, we need some more Ray Legions to sacrifice for, for the kids, to see the need of the yeah. low income kids to, to work. We need some more aldermen, and I tell them that want to see the need of the community. It's 12th and Park. We use it, this is our, this is the seniors, we use it during the daytime. We had young kids from Shaw, and I'm sure she would speak on that. They come, they didn't know how to swim. We put those kids in there, they were swimming within two weeks. That's a need. So I will, any question? No, I just want to thank you for your testimony, and you're exactly right. Uh, you know, we should not be surprised at the end of the day when our public safety numbers come back so high and we see all the murders and everything else when, you know, there has been there hasn't been the investment in our rec centers and youth programs and services. You have to fight crime uh, in a holistic manner. 
and you can't just add more police and do hotspot police and that stuff. We expect it to change. You have to invest in our youth. And I, 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 I am so thankful that you've come to make this testimony today. I have one question. When are we going, when are we going to treat the homeless people with, with like they are human, not like they are cows? To feed, bring them in, feed them, and then put them out. And they don't have any other activities going. They need psychiatry, they need help. When are we going to stop doing that? It's not fair to bring them in, let them sleep on cots, all of them together. I'm a farm girl, so I know. And feed them and then put them out. So that's another question I wish you all would answer. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, we have Mary Ann Smith. Mary Ann Smith, concerned, concerned senior. Um, Ms. Ollie has just about made our point. Obviously, we're here because we're concerned that the city has made a hasty decision to house homeless women at the 12th Street Recreation Center. We feel that this decision was made without considering the impact that this would have on our community, on the seniors, on the young people, even on the homeless women themselves, because they're not being served. So we would like to ask that this center be restored. Now we're told that this is a temporary situation, but we're not convinced that this is exactly true because this facility has been used in the past. It seems that every time the city needs a place to house the homeless, they bring them to the 12th Street Recreation Center. And as Mrs. Ms. Stewart said, this is not good for the youth because they're probably not going to be going to the Bahamas or the Aruba. They need recreation. Now, we're told it's temporary, but we don't, we're not sure because this is not the first time it's happened. It happens when the city needs a place to house the homeless. So they're fed and they're given a cot and then they're turned out into the street. They're not given job training, drug rehab, psychiatric services. So this, this is really a disservice to the seniors, the youth, and the homeless. The seniors, because this is a wellness center for us. This keeps us out of nursing homes, hospitals, and we need it. We need the facilities. We need the pool for arthritis aqua. We need the equipment for balance and arthritis. And we're very disappointed. And we're not convinced that this is the last time it's going to happen. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you so much. Ms. Cochran. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't know about this uh, adventure. Ms. Ollie, but any time that uh, my elders ask me to do something, I step up. So I'm here to talk to you about the Short Neighborhood Youth Leadership Program. For many years, we have served which youth program? Short okay. Neighborhood Youth Leadership Program. For many years, we have serviced the community uh, with uh, character activity, character building activities. And one of the programs we were fortunate to uh, attend was an intergenerational program with the Southside uh, Senior Citizens. And again, we were teaching, going, taking the children swimming and what have you. And we've done that for over six years. 
And so our main focus is to make sure that the children have something to help them with discipline, and leadership, and character building. And that's why we decided to do that. Now, on a personal note, I was I am a proud product of that Ray Leisure Community Center because I lived in those projects. And I am truly convinced that without the direction of that rec center, that I would not have been who I am. I'm a retired educator and proud to be a retired educator. And I know that if children do not have anything to do, they're going to go to the streets, they're going to commit crime, etc. And one of the young ladies has a sign that says, Re recreation instead of incarceration. We must consider, we must consider the youth of today because they're going to be sitting where you are in the future. Now, I'm not opposed to a place for the homeless because I also volunteer for the homeless too. But I know driving around the city, there are many buildings that you could probably rehab. And one of the young ladies spoke of how you all have the tools and equipment to re refurbish these buildings and the money. Now, I'm not really good with finances, but I know you have the money because we pay taxes for that. And there should be a way that you can make, develop a program for both the children and the homeless. Now, I'm not, I don't know why these people are homeless, and that's not my business. But I do know if we do not give these children a place to go, they're going to become homeless too. And I know that working with them, because I service them, I really think those that are part of their environment, we don't need to let our children see what is happening to a Bible building that can help them. They may get the wrong idea. You know, we're trying to set uh, role models for them. We're trying to set uh, some positive images for them. And the sick come into a building. We have, last year, the homes was, was in the building that we were in, and we had to come around the back. And the children were saying, well, why do we have to come around the back? We normally come through the front door. And we explained to them that the other uh, part of the building is being used for the homeless. And they saw some of the homeless people being lined up. what's going on. And so we explained to them. So I don't think that all the image for the children to see, you know, because it gives them a false hope. You know, here are some homeless people in our building that we can be playing ball, etc., etc. And you know, the swimming pool is part, they had it blocked off and we only had a little small portion to come into the building because they didn't want us on the other side of the, the, the side where the homeless people were coming in. Uh, well, I taught for the St. Louis Public Schools for 33 years, and I tried my best to present a positive image. And that's what we must do for our children, because there are so many negative things that can capture them. So the media, you name it, there are so many negative things. And I really don't want to be a part of anything that's going to give them negative images. And I just want you all to reconsider and go back to the books and see if there is some way that you can benefit. The children can benefit as well as the homeless. But these children are the, our future. Not that the homeless are not, but these children are our future. And there are young minds that we're trying to mold. And we really need to consider that. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, Justin is an idol bird. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'll be referencing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be referencing page two of the. Uh, Fiscal year 2018 proposed annual operation uh, plan. Uh, as well, I have provided on the city's website from the, from the 19th, or the 19th, or a previous meeting.
CDA's office on the second floor at 1520, you see all these murals of all these great districts. Some have involved, some have not. So I ask you all, why is there, um, in, under grants, it's probably about a two point some million dollar um, change that's going to happen between um, 2017 and 2018, and then the capital improvements, there's another substantial amount. And I would like to know, is there a way that you all can maybe refigure something, I don't know, or even create a competition to where people like who live, who live in wards like mine who want to help the rest of the city and our region we discover the greatness of our ward. A lot of people don't know we have a west side of this town, and my ward is also per a CDA report that was done, a comprehensive report that was done in 1987, said our neighborhood was the blueprint for the future West County suburbs. And for an example, if you all know about West County Place, each house sits on six city lots, and um, the minimum house is probably about 4,000 square feet. And I say this to say that, if, if, if your grandparents were a part of putting Buzz Aldrich out in space, you don't forget about him. And our neighborhood is forgotten. Even though we have some nice developments with the trolley and what Maxine is about to do with the Delmar Divine project, but part of the study that they did for the trolley project, they talked about our neighborhood creating its own CDC. And when I asked about was there some funding for us to, you know, to be a part of that, they told me there was none. And that would led me to come down to speak with you all. Who, who did you talk to? Uh, just as someone at CDA? Yes, uh, I can't remember their name off the top. I had a, a phone call with them. And they, they I go ahead. And uh, the gentleman said he would get back to me, and no one ever got back to me. And I started digging some more and looked at the CDA's budget and talked about where the money had went. But up beyond that, I've just been doing research on my own from the information that you all provide. Okay. Um, is, let us make sure make sure we have your contact information so we can follow up with you and see who you spoke to at CDA so that we can get to the bottom of that and also work with your all the person uh, to see if we can get application in for you know a new housing corporation. So that's the main thing we look for is a new housing corporation yes. twenty six four. And I'm, I'm open to work to all the nice people that work as part of the trolley plan. Like you talked about Washington being a part of it. Uh, yeah. Not Cornerstone, no. U.S. Bank, CDC, all these nice big names. I would like to try to get all those people to come. We're going to put the sign up list back out. Uh,
and there are lots of people in the community with common sense solutions. We have empty school buildings. We have churches that would be willing to partner with City Hall in providing facility where they have a bathroom with a shower where they have um, a washer and dryer you know people who have to wear filthy garments and carry the rest of their stuff researching and seeing what's happening that's effective in other cities. So that would be my challenge for you all is to reach out to people in the community who have been researching, who have some constructive ideas. And together, my ward is partnering with Sam Moore's ward. Because Dogtown, we don't have a high crime rate. There's some people I wish would mow their lawns more frequently. I haven't quite learned how the Hill manages that. But by and large, we're, we're a good little community. And we don't have a lot of needs. But other parts of the city do. And Cedric Redmond came to my board and, and talked about partnering and I called those committee people and said, let's get together and talk. I've yet to, to reach out to Sam Moore, but let's, let's partner. Whether it's a neighborhood cleanup or it's registering people to vote, let's, let's partner together and make the city stronger. And that's always my ultimate goal. So you gave me the microphone, President, and I appreciate that. All right, thank you, thank you. Mona? For example, with all the community um, services being funded and all of the improvement that's gone into the school district, getting it back into accreditation, um, the only way that the citizens can really fully take advantage of those in the most efficient way to the greatest extent is to be stable in their housing. I mean, how many times 
Is it just hard to track a person down because they moved again? And so much research has shown the effects on you know, being homeless or just simply having to move multiple times um, due to you know, rent increases and people just trying to find a place they can afford. Every time a kid moves, um, it really affects their academic performance in terms of being able to just get their bearings again and um, get back on track with everything. So I just think that keeping that fund strong um, will help solidify gains in other areas. And just, you know, our, our organization is going strong, but we just get a lot of, we get approached by a lot of people and we get a lot of requests that we can't really fulfill. You know, we can only do one, a couple projects at a time with our staffing, but there's a lot of people out there who want to get into providing affordable housing. A lot of schools want to see how can they form some kind of entity to get a few affordable houses for their parents so that they can keep them in place. So the more that is available there and the more we, you know, do our best to manage it well, it, it would be a really good asset to pretty much anyone living in the city. So right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Gary. like to make comments um, after our last speaker and I'll just start it out while he's uh, uh, working with his phone. First of all, to thank everyone for taking out uh, your busy schedule uh, to come down and speak on behalf of the issues that you find important. I do believe that the um, we're hearing about um, a really important issue and that is the 12th and Park uh, Recreation Center. Uh, this is the second time that uh, within I believe two years that the 12th and Park uh, Center has been used and which displaces our seniors as well as displaces our youth. Our homeless certainly must have a place uh, and I believe that we have far too long have gone without um, putting together a permanent solution for homelessness. And so we put together a great recreation center uh, through the capital uh, fund, you know, repairing 12th and Park, and then we turn around and have to displace our youth and displace our seniors, and that's not what this city should be doing if we want to progress. You know, when you displace your youth from the recreation center, you are uh, really uh, adding to the public safety issue that we have in the whole city. We want to have our young people when they are out of school uh, to be able to go immediately uh, to those programs at the 12th and Park Recreation Center as opposed to having idle minds and idle hands that then could go into areas of mischief that we don't want to see them do. So I'm so glad that uh, the ladies with Ollie Stewart have come out and spoke uh, on this issue. It's very, very, very important that we act. And so I want to ask if there's anyone at this panel here today have uh, any kind of date that they can uh, share that when we will have um, 12th and Park back in service for the youth. I know we have a representative from the mayor's office, Mr. Tim O'Connell. I'll be looking forward to your answer to the um, uh, uh, seniors that have come here today on the 12th and Park issue. I have Tim O'Connell, chief of staff to, to uh, Mayor Mike Bruson, but uh, uh, Director Todd, Walker, Walter, Todd Walterman's got an answer. Todd Walterman's got an answer on the day. So my, my name is Todd Walterman. I'm the director of operations for Mayor Bruson. I was also with uh, 
the, the ex uh, Francis Slay as well. So I was part of some of these decisions. Uh, I apologize for the, the inconvenience and negative impact on the neighborhood. We, we are planning and we are on track to uh, have the, the women removed by the time the last day of school, which is May 20 something, I don't have the particular date. And I am promising you that we will be gone by then. I've also summoned the, the human service director to come here, he'll be here in about 10 minutes. When we get done with this, I'd like to take some of your time and go a little deeper into this and, and get a little further and try to you know communicate better with you guys if you can hang around a little bit after this meeting. I, and I and I appreciate you doing that and I appreciate you coming out and, and that's why I've summoned this gentleman from another meeting so him and I can sit down and talk to you and your team we're back to you back to me I'm good to go um, I'm here speaking on behalf of the Team Turf group. Um, we've been around for about seven or eight months now, and our focus has been to really improve, or focus on the city's transparency in terms of how it operates, but also um, racial equity in terms of broader policies, um, and with a particular focus on how development is done, both economic development projects and um, housing, whether it's for sale or rental. So those have been our initial focuses. And in terms of the transparency in the process, um, while you know the post is read, the data record I don't believe is read widely, um, I was not aware of this meeting until receiving an email at about six o'clock last night saying that it I was present at the ENA meeting on Wednesday afternoon uh, in the mayor's boardroom, and there was no mention that this meeting was happening today. And I did talk to Mr. Tang, and he said that it is within the purview of ENA to have its own hearings. I'm glad you're having this hearing, and I'd encourage you, perhaps with, um, I believe it's Wednesday afternoon, you'll be meeting again as ENA to make a recommendation or I guess an initial approval of this budget to then send to the Board of Aldermen. Uh, I'd encourage you to try and schedule a hearing maybe on Monday or Tuesday evening where people can have adequate notice and hopefully uh, work to attend because what
wish you would revise that and put it in for five million because we really should be uh, following what the ordinance specifies. Um, I believe there's still time to to make a change to that. The, the 17 million dollar, I'm not sure what the technical term is, is that a shortfall in, in the budget? Um, on page five of the uh, presentation to the board that was made by Mr. Payne on Wednesday. This is available on the city's website and if people go to the budget division section of the website and then to the transparency and documents, um, the two inch thick binder is available for download in separate sections and this presentation is also available for download and the video is also online so you can go to the city's YouTube channel and April at this point. April 19th and there's an hour long meeting. Uh, Mr. Payne presents for about 40 minutes and then there's some discussion amongst uh, their crews and uh, Comptroller Green and President Reed regarding you know, issues with the budget, how to accommodate the shortfall, Rep mention was made of the uh, recreation center, not recreation centers not getting fully funded. Um, so page five of that presentation shows where the proposed gap is being made up by reallocating revenues. Um, one of those revenues is at the reallocation of the trust fund money of the half million, the half million dollars, and then the annual allocations awards for award improvement funds that's been cut by 25%. Was it fully funded last year? Yeah, 85%. At 85%. So I'm a resident of the 8th Ward. Um, Alderman Conway has explained in detail how much it costs to reprave a block and it's, I think we get three or four blocks repaved a year um, and I know other wards north and further south have much greater infrastructure needs than the Eighth Ward does. Um, but this money is allocated 28 ways. Um, so I think constituents across the city are not going to be happy with that. And the uh, sales tax increase that we just had with Proposition, uh, Proposition 1, um, those revenues are being uh, redirected to cover this budget shortfall. And I realize that that doesn't start until... Go ahead. Actually, I'm just going to correct. No, those, those funds have, are appropriate, but they are not. Those, those were not. I agree. Rock one funds are to set aside I mean, 1.1 million that is allocated for capital, which goes to capital. Well, they're just set aside in the budget to be determined by the uh, ordinance. There, there's a there's a point on that, and they've been set aside for that. And I imagine the details will be fleshed out as the budget process proceeds. Okay. Um, but the, the increase in the use tax over the That's correct. Okay. So that was to be allocated. Was there specific allocations for that or for the What was discussed at the DNA part of the initial resolution of the budget gap was to utilize the increase of the use tax, not, not the sales tax, but the use tax. That was about $2.3 million for seven months worth of collections because next year is going to be a partial year. Um, I believe ENA expressed the preference that they would rather see that uh, allocated toward um, uh, new items, uh, whatever the priorities would be, but DNA has expressed. And so your challenge is trying to make other reductions and changes such that we can accommodate that so that the actual new with revenues are appropriated that way. So, but we still have a situation where that additional tax could be addressing um, needs called out for in, in use tax, such as affordable housing and health care. So it could be directed there, which was the original intent of the use, uh, use tax when it was created in 2002, 2003. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, kind of walk through your kind of your questions and statements and then I'll open it up at the, at the end. Um, okay, okay. Um, so 
So the, the, just going to comment on a couple of sections in, in the operating plan, and one of them uh, is described as the vibrant and diverse economy. And the references in there are principally to the TIP projects that are in the Central Corridor, and also to the National Geospatial Agency. And this really doesn't speak, in my mind, to a uh, diverse economy uh, when we're just highlighting the, the Central Corridor. Um, in the, I'm not aware of full details on this, but my understanding is that the city's payments, we're about 61% of the general fund goes toward paying off debt. Is that? Debt service. There was a discussion in the capital where, where about half, a little bit more than half, have dedicated sources. I think it was like 67 percent that are allocated for debt service. But the percentage of the general funding more like seven or eight percent. Okay. But basically, control uh, agreement. I'm not sure if you can have the details on this. But my understanding is that the city isn't isn't even keeping up with the principal and interest payments. In terms of our tariff debt over time is actually increasing. And that's based on the projects today without the ones that have recently been approved. Well, I want to separate out the, the budget. This is your tax okay. dollars that, you know, this is real dollars. TIF, that's in development, that's not a part of what you pay in and then go out in services. The TIF go over to the development projects. And so there is a estimate, estimate for what is going to be collected, right? Okay, so I just wanted to separate that out and make you, because Beverly, if you want to take it from here, but those dollars, whatever shortfall that the developers have estimated that's going into their projects, could be there, but it doesn't affect the de delivery of city services. You, you with me on that? Okay. Because the law says that you know you get a TIF estimate, and then half of it goes into the development, the other half goes to the general fund, and so the part that goes to the general fund we can count, but the part that goes to the developers we don't put on, uh, you know, t t because that's not for us. It's going to go to Cortex. It's going to go to Ballpark Village. All of those different projects that got approved for TIF, and so then those we have a department, a TIF department that keeps track. And you are correct. Some of those estimates are not met, but we do not take general fund dollars to go over there to help that development. They have to deal with that on their own. Yeah. But basically the level of incentivized development, whether it's tax abatement or TIF, is... Um, it's too high in my the, opinion. Right, it's a contributing factor into the credit rating agencies downgrading. Well, what the so contributing factor is, is if we are giving not only a TIF dollar, but in addition to a TIF dollar, we're giving a general fund dollar. That's where the concern of the rating agencies. The rating agencies say, okay, you've got incentive that are off book. Your TIF is an off book. Your uh, tax abatement, your um, other incentives that don't take away general fund dollars. When you take away a general fund dollar, you're creating a debt that the city would have to be, uh, have an obligation and that obligation is to a non-essential need to the citizens. It's not delivering services. For example, Scott Trade, if they take a tax dollar to pay off the debt to revamp Scott Trade or to build a soccer stadium or to build a football stadium, that doesn't clean your streets in the neighborhoods. It doesn't hire a policeman. The essential needs of the city. And so that's the, um, um, credit rating agency's concern is how come we are adding more debt to the books for those things that are not essential needs. A soccer stadium is not an essential need to run a city. And so yes, we have to be concerned about those things that we put ourselves in debt for that do not serve our community. You're welcome. 
I think I'll just finish off. I should have it last the morning. <laughs> but, um, Um, I guess I'll, I'll just kind of register kind of final statement in terms of the process here it needs to be one of great public engagement. Um, I don't want to subscribe to the daily record for two hundred and forty dollars a year. Oh, it's golden from the libraries, so idea. I think four libraries have them. So I think notification process uh, both online um, and have some other communication systems for folks who don't have. Social uh, media. Frequent internet access and really genuine engagement. Uh, we have a situation where we seem to be moving off of what we did last year rather than uh, Jimmy Carter style uh, zero based budget where we look at what every department genuinely needs rather than just looking at what we did last year. Um, for example, the type of EMS equipment we're purchasing, um, the type of policing strategies we're using. I think that the, the women who testified earlier regarding the recreation center and the programs that are, and you know, programming now uh, can prevent the track down the um, school to prison pipeline. And funding those services should be a priority rather than Incentivizing, uh, particularly all market rate development without any accommodations for affordable housing units, whereby we're placing 5, 10, 15 years tax abatement. And during that time, uh, we're sold it because of the revenue that's going to come in in 5, 10, 15 years' time. But during that time, the provision of public safety for that population, uh, the provision for street replacement, picking up trash, that burden, cost-wise, is being spread on the community, particularly residents, but also small business owners who are pulling poor freight. Mm -hmm. If you're a tenant, whether you're a lower income, medium, upper income tenant, you are paying property taxes via your landlord. Um, when the trash bill was put on by a lot of dollars a month, Every landlord I know, after a year or even immediately, is going to look at upping the rents in order to cover that cost. And when they have both home ownership and uh, commercial owners, um, when property taxes uh, go up, um, they're basically shouldering the burden for the people who benefit from the incentives, whether it's purchases of property or whether it's a large commercial companies. All right. Thank you for your time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm in complete agreement with you on a number of things, especially for the need for greater community engagement in you know, our, all of our processes here at, uh, at city government, especially the budgeting uh, process. Uh, which is why a number of years ago I put in place next door because I wanted the neighborhoods and communities across the city to be more organized and city departments to begin to report things back through next door. Uh, across the time since I uh, rolled that out, we now have, I mean, tens of thousands of people across the city now connected to it. Uh, the message you received from next door is a message that I sent out to make sure that uh, people are notified by more than just the standard means by which we're governed by. Uh, a number of years ago, I began to require the Board of Aldermen to hold evening meetings for the way for ways and means, but not just at City Hall. Uh, to go out within the community and hold evening meetings throughout the community so we can we can address transportation issues for people and also make sure people have a greater opportunity to um, uh, let the lawmakers know uh, and their legislators know um, exactly how they would like to see their tax dollars spent. Uh, and under the new administration, we may have an opportunity to do some of those things now with uh, the Board of ENA. Uh, all those things are good, uh, and we need to continue to modernize our communication.
education efforts and processes and uh, reach out uh, to the community using more modern technology that's readily available, right? Uh, so, so I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to doing that in the future with the Board of ENA also. And I'm sure that the, the new mayor will also, because she comes from the board and she was used to doing it at the board, and, and I think that she's going to come up and do some innovative things. Uh, Comptroller Green, any questions or comments from anyone? Well, I'll make further comments um, regarding the uh, Shaw Neighborhood Youth Program, the character building. I totally support uh, what you're doing there. And um, once again, we do need a uh, solution for the homeless. We need to get a permanent solution. We have the skilled city employees uh, in facilities management along with you, uh, the Human Services Department to put their heads together and figure out uh, what can be done to take care of that situation so we should uh, not have to displace our seniors and displace our uh, young people in the 12th and Park Recreation Center. So I want to say that. I also want to thank our committee woman for coming with uh, 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 her um, great idea about having the neighborhoods to partner. We do have neighborhoods that are doing well and we need to partner with those that are not doing so well in order to help. So you have committee men and committee women throughout the city to work together and to develop uh, neighborhood solutions that work. So I, I really appreciate that. We need the vacant building solutions and so we do need to partner so that the whole city becomes stronger. Uh, regarding the north side uh, housing, we, we have to make sure that we continue to strengthen the affordable housing uh, fund, which I want to compliment the budget director because he did add the money uh, back to the affordable housing from last year. So I want to thank you for that, Paul. Affordable housing fund. I want to uh, say that, Team Tiff, thank you for your uh, your dedication to uh, your research efforts and your study, and hopefully we can uh, take um, this year to make some strides into um, keeping a lid on incentives to developers to make sure that when we are faced with a development opportunity for growth, that what we're going to get is a more sensitive developer to be sensitive to the communities and the citizens that live in the city so it can be more fiscally responsible to our citizens. You know, we've got to streamline those incentives. If the developer can do a project without taking the maximum length of years or the maximum length of what the law allows for TIF, let them do that. You know, we do have some great um, examples of that in our past where the developer steps up to the plate recognizing that he's uh, in an urban area where there needs to be job training, there needs to be jobs, and so he's willing to step up to the plate and take less development incentives so that more money comes straight to the city because the city has the job of doing all the hard work of you know, making our communities better communities with the jobs and with the job training and uh, educating our, our youth and our, our young people and uh, providing uh, recreational opportunities as well. So you mentioned reducing the pipeline uh, from, you know, to prison. We've got to do that. We've got to reduce that pipeline. We've got to, you know, so that means that we pick those programs and make them a priority that reduce that pipeline. That's our recreation, that's our education, job training, and affordable housing. So we've got to stick to that. And so I want to compliment um, Todd. I want to compliment uh, Beverly Fitzsimmons here because I know that they put their heads together in order to come up with some ways 
that, that they're going to go back to our new mayor uh, to suggest that we can have the um, cuts that we need throughout this budget so that we can address the recreation problem. And we've, and Todd, you know, has said that the Health and Human Services Director is coming, so I see that he has arrived. So that you guys could put your heads together to put a permanent solution together for 12th and Park so that we won't have, so, so that we won't ever have you guys displaced. I know Todd is a man of his word. Uh, and, and you know, you ladies take, took your time today to come so that I know that you can get together at the table in the mayor's office. I want you to make them comfortable, Todd, in the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. Snacks, the coffee, <laughs> coffee, water, so that the ladies that have come, they're usually in the pool now, Paul. They're usually in the pool. Right, ladies? Yes. That's what I know. So at least you could do is make them comfortable in the mayor's office and feel important. I want you when to make them to feel now. very important <laughs> in the mayor's office and, and make it worth their time this morning. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I really, really appreciate you putting together, you know, this, you know, this is an opportune time to be heard. And I want to... I want to just also just tell everybody thank you. You know, I, I attended this meeting now for 10 or 11 years, and, and in my recollection, I think this is the largest turnout we've had. Even during very difficult budget years, uh, we were making major, we had to make major cuts and everything else. This is the largest, most organized turnout we've ever had, in one. and it really makes me feel good to know that people are interested in their bringing their ideas forward because you know sometimes we feel like we're in a vacuum because uh, you know for example the controller may be pushing the issue or I may be pushing the issue but when you begin to have the community behind you the community is coming down and talking about issues of senior services youth homelessness affordable housing neighborhood development uh, and our rec centers yeah, that raises awareness in a much different uh, way, and it helps us to begin to get these things done. So I certainly appreciate your engagement today. Uh, so we will be meeting next Wednesday, the 26th, at Board of EMA, uh, to take up the last changes uh, to the uh, budget to get it to the Board of Aldermen. Uh, and once it gets to the Board of Aldermen and the Board of the, the Ways and Means Committee will begin to hold hearings on the budget. And they, most of those hearings will be held almost every day, uh, Monday through Thursday. And they generally start between 9 and 10 o'clock. It's up to the chairman when he wants to post them and have the meetings held. Uh, they will have meetings throughout the community also throughout that same time and uh, bring you know, a lot of the departments forward and ask the departments questions to see if you know if we can make changes in the departments and things of that nature and then vote a bill back out to the board of aldermen but excuse me back to the board of bna and then we'll take up those uh, additions and deletions and send it back to the board uh, to be finally passed out by june 30th uh, the city of st louis uh, people often criticize us because they say you know we need to do whole host of things better. One of the things I think the city has done a great job at is we require a balanced budget. Right? And our budget has to be out by June 30th. So we, some cities, they can debate the budget and hold it up you know, for months on end and never get to a balanced budget or pass budgets out that are unbalanced and put the city in uh, financial, you know, on, on uh, shaky financial foot. Uh, but this budget will be passed out by June 30th, uh, and it will be a balanced budget, which means that uh, things that we need money for, we may have to cut other things, other less and lower priority items, uh, to shore up some of the things that you all talked about today. 
because I think that to fund the things that you spoke about today, I think that those should be our priorities. I think that those things will make a measurable change in our city. Uh, it means that we will invest in our youth, we will, we will invest in our seniors, and invest in our neighborhoods, and invest in our homeless population. All of those things are good things and they need to happen. So I'm expecting that we're going to get there. I certainly thank each and every one of you for showing up, especially my former committee woman, the person who got me into politics, Ali Stewart. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Appreciate you so much. Uh, and Smith and all our seniors, I appreciate you. Um, with that, I move that. Oh. Oh, one more comment. I didn't want to leave Evans. Is your name Mr. Evans? Idleburg, you mentioned the community block grant, the HUD, the 26th Ward uh, Housing Corporation. I just wanted to show you that I show some support uh, and, and to thank you for coming out. I do support what you're here for as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I also recognize that we have one of the newer, newly elected aldermen in, in here. Did you have a comment before? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Gunther. So. Thank you for coming out. With that, I move for adjournment. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Who should carry out?